This video serves as a bit of a walkthrough of a wood shop we created about eight years ago called DSM. Although this includes a lot of the basic steps in turning logs into decks, our purpose is to demonstrate the real essence of what DSM really is. By translating the demands of our pro riders directly into both procedure and specialized equipment, we have created an environment that is demonstrably different from anything we've ever encountered. We hope you enjoy this little tour. It's easy to forget that the decks we ride grew out of the ground. They live through summers and winters, soaking up everything from the environment they live in. That is until we come and chop them down. The point is that the best maple in the world is generally grown in places that meet a long list of environmental factors. That's why we go to such great lengths to import all of our logs from the Great Lakes region in southern Canada. Each log is tagged with an ID that enables the logs to be traced back to its original source. After the logs are cut to the right length, they are submerged into special tanks in preparation for the veneering process. The logs are soaked at a precise temperature so that the veneer lathe is able to peel the log into long sheets of incredible consistency without damaging the cell structure of the wood itself. Customized dryers pull the moisture out of the freshly made veneers in an even, thoroughly controlled manner. Zeroing in and maintaining the exact amount of moisture within the wood is an extremely important part of this process. After veneers are dried, they are inspected and tested for consistency as well as moisture content. Each and every piece is trimmed for accurate size and shape in preparation for the pressing phase. Then they are sanded evenly and smoothly with precision machinery. The thickness of every sheet has to be entirely uniform because once you start stacking one upon another, even small imperfections can multiply into bigger problems. Veneers are then placed into dyeing tanks and pressurized so that the dye penetrates the wood completely. Every individual veneer is inspected and measured by hand to maintain quality and consistency. The next step is to glue and press these veneers into their intended mold. The quality of the glues and their catalysts is a huge factor, especially from batch to batch. Water-based glues with high-grade catalysts have been the industry standard for decades. Although epoxy has always been known to be a better bonding agent, Nobody had ever developed ones optimized for skateboarding. Beyond that, epoxy is such an aggressive bonding agent that working with it presents a host of problems and expenses that were just too much of a hassle. DSM pioneered a system that allowed us to use epoxies, and the result is our resin decks. Not only do they hold their intended molding with better fidelity, they maintain it much longer with even less adhesive because it is so aggressive. You end up with a lighter, stiffer deck that doesn't decay at all in the same way as a regular deck. One of the most important functions of any company is implementing rider input. For years, my job was to make sure that all the pros under our roof got exactly the decks they wanted. This is one of the key reasons we were so inspired to change our production procedures in order to make every deck feel exactly the same. The enormous number of hours skaters put into learning every trick are intertwined with the subtle leverage points yielded by the deck's relationship between the holes and the transition from flat into the kick. Aside from a few rare requests, it didn't require a lot of special materials or stuff like that. People pretty much buy what the pros ride. The only difference is that most of the key guys could only ride certain decks, since they all came out slightly different depending on where they were in the mold. Top ones are the steepest, and bottom ones are the most mellow. Each ply wraps around the one above it, so the bottom ply is the longest, broadest curve. The same basic principle is at work any time you make a turn. The inside lane is always the sharpest, the outside is the longest. This made it so that when I would call the wood shop and order a box of tin, I would have to designate which ones. Number fours and fives in the mold were best for mine and day one shape, for example. That would send one of the workers sorting through as many 50 decks just to get tin boards that suited whichever pro. The odds of finding the deck you could ride in a shop, for example, if you broke one on tour, was one in five at best. The old way of pressing five decks at a time wreaked havoc with that sensitive transitional area. Daewon had a patented method of turning threes into fives that the woodshop guys mixed in a few into his box. He flipped one onto his back, then parked his car on the bend overnight. It's that critical. When you designed the mold for these five-stack presses, you had to keep in mind what would happen to the contours at either end of the stack. 
because one or two of them might not even be skatable by your standards. As far as many of our pros were concerned, all but one were rejects. The first thing we did at DSM was create molds that made every deck exactly the same. Each mold was CNC'd out of steel, ensuring that each and every mold was identical and would never decay over time, in contrast to the standard way of making molds individually with less permanent material. Curing is the next step, and it's a crucial one. In the past, a problem that we had was that sometimes when orders were ramping up, especially during the spring, we would notice decks getting soggier and soggier when we were shipping the most worldwide. When we didn't have enough supply of either veneers or perfectly cured decks to keep up with their cycle, they would yank them out of the curing before they were actually done, thinking they would shave a few days off, which wouldn't matter. This whole situation just shows the importance of curing. If the glue isn't allowed to dry properly, the wood won't retain the mold's form. That's why from the very start we took extra steps, both in procedure and within the actual facility, to treat the decks as if they were patients coming out of surgery allowing them to recover in tightly controlled rooms where the decks could stay cool with several finely tuned humidity control devices. After they're cured but before they're shaped, we drill the decks with specific templates that are made to hone in over sharply defined markings from the mold itself. Previously, decks were shaped then drilled, leaving each batch with slightly different nose and tail lengths. Even 1 seconds of an inch off on either end could create a 1 16th difference overall, which was enough for one of our skaters to reject. And even if they did get those distances correct, their placement along the concave was just another variable. Pushing the holes too close or too far from the bends upsets the intended leverage points on the nose and tail. Since decks in the past were created and translated to mold by hand, it was nearly impossible to keep human error from creeping in. In contrast to this old way of doing things, DSM masters are digitally finalized and reproduced in steel by computer automated design and machining. This means that common errors that creep in along the subtle curves are digitally eradicated and each deck comes out the way it was intended. After they're routed, decks are thoroughly inspected and finished by hand. One of the key features of DSM is the unprecedented number of man hours assigned to the inspection and finishing of each and every deck. There are 14 stages of intense quality control. From here, the decks are in the final stages of lacquering, burnishing, and finally sprayed with a clear gloss. Decks are laser etched with brand logo identification and a unique serial number to track the manufacture date. Even the heat transfer papers are produced in-house, giving DSM complete control from log to finished product. With access to every part of the manufacturing process and the input from all of our riders, we have the ability to push the modern skateboard to levels we could have never have hoped for when we first began. At any given time, select riders are trying samples derived from new ideas. This way, we can continue to play our part in making decks to help take your skating to the next level. Innovation rarely comes by revolution. It develops by continual and gradual evolution. With DSM, we are well equipped to do our part.